um, if you could just explain a little bit about your background and you know your experience sure. with with it, the existing Hong Kong schools and why you thought it was um, it now was the right time to open a new school of innovation. Absolutely. So I've been in education for over 15 years, 17 years now. Uh, I've taught in IB schools, in local schools. I also used to teach in schools in the United States. Um, and I've studied in different countries, including Hong Kong, US, UK, and Japan. Um, and so I've been exposed to different models. Um, but in addition to teaching in traditional schools, uh, I also seven years ago founded an educational organization, K through 12 education organization called Baker and Bloom. And I think building this school is really a culmination of several things, one of which is running and starting Baker and Bloom uh, and getting to work with many different students from different schools. And the second is um, my work with uh, what my husband and his family started, which is Cocoon Foundation, uh, which is a nonprofit focused on entrepreneurship education. And I think it's the largest, largest nonprofit effort to do that in the past in Hong Kong right now. Uh, and we're working with over 40 schools with 8,000 secondary students there. Um, and finally, I've been working on the Harvard Book Prize for the past six years. Um, I chaired it for four years and I'm still on the committee, very active there. And there's a program and a scholarship mentorship program there where we get to work with over 240 secondary schools in Hong Kong each year uh, and get to meet with students and read their application essays. So the, this is a program to send students abroad to the Harvard Summer School, but also to, um, there's an essay prize and to mentor young people. So um, that gives me a broader exposure to school system in Hong Kong, many different types of schools uh, and different types of people, young people in Hong Kong. Uh, and the entrepreneurship education part with Cocoon, uh, we actually run workshops within schools, design thinking workshops. We get entrepreneurs, to local entrepreneurs, as well as people who have global backgrounds to speak to students, run corporate challenge. We're doing one just this week with Coca-Cola. We've done them with Ikea um, and we do job shadowing and internships and really push young people to think about ways to solve problems and not just like run a startup or you know start a business, but to, to think about how you can add value. And I think going back to um, building this school, um, after running Baker and Bloom for the past seven years, actually th starting three years ago, uh, I began to notice a lot of recurring patterns in, in students. Um, so Baker and Bloom, just to clarify, it's an after school education center and we focus on creative literacy. So we do that through academic ways as well as um, more creative ways. So creative writing, public speaking, but also a lot of project-based learning. And um, we do test prep as well and we do admissions. But I think that broad exposure um, made me understand that even in very successful schools that people really you know, work very hard to get into, there are many problems in terms of the learning and um, the restrictions that, um, they, that students and teachers face. Because I think that, you know, I, I'm very mindful that having worked in these schools myself and, you know, I have children myself, it's nobody's fault in a way. Um, but, and a lot of times we are all trying to work with the parameters that we've, we're given. And there is, um, and precisely because I felt like when I was teaching in a school, I could do great things in the classroom, like you know, run a medieval simulation, a Renaissance fair, public, publish really creative poetry. But that's sort of within a classroom level of innovation. Um, and with Baker and Bloom, we were able to cut across every discipline. Um, and you know, when the, we're teaching um, literature, we can make connections between history and art and religion. And we can use very contemporary topical texts and what's happening in the news. Um, and there's like a lot of autonomy and freedom. But at the same time, we're working outside of the school system. And the main course and the main ex core experience of most children is really going to school. So I felt that as an educator, I also have the responsibility to try to do something about that, that core experience. And I really would felt compelled to. Um, and I could see many interesting things being tried across different schools, uh, but not all of it put together in a coherent, innovative model. So I think maybe that's what's different about our school. We're not just incorporating one or two new programs and plugging it into uh, a system, but rather reimagining what school can look like. 
what the timetable can look like, what the content can look like, how we teach, what the furniture looks like. So yeah, sorry, that was a rather long answer, but I wanted to share a little bit about my own journey and uh, what we're trying to do here. 